everyone and welcome to the Red Brick House. I thought it might be fun today to share with you all of my unfinished projects or my unfinished objects or UFOs that some people like to call it. And so I would like to hear from you. What made you stop working on your project? For me, most of the time, it's usually because I've found something new that is just a little bit more interesting than what I'm already doing. And so I kind of put those things aside. And well, now it's kind of time, I feel like, to get back to those things. I've been, I've been kind of having the, the urge to do that, to, you know, get back into these projects that I just haven't finished yet. And so, also, I wanted to share with you my Kawandi project and give you an update on that because it's getting close, y'all. I'm almost done with that little quilt and I'm so excited about it. So I'm going to share that. That will be my last UFO. And so, with that said, let's see what's in my bag. Okay, I hope you have your coffee, your tea, your water, whatever you want to drink today, because this might be a long video. <laughs> Look at this cute little coffee cup. I'm drinking some decaf coffee this afternoon. But isn't that cute? It looks like a little flower pot. Oh, it's so cute. I think my sister gave me that. So, let's get started. What's in the first bag? Okay, this bag, this you might recognize. So in this bag is the very first project I ever did here on YouTube. And the reason why this is an unfinished project is because I wanted to make another pair of socks. My very first video was a pair of wool uh, knitted socks. I had used uh, Arna and Carlos's pattern for their easiest sock in the world and I used this beautiful wool that I bought on sale at a little homestead uh, place and so the reason why I have it here in my unfinished things is because I wanted to make another pair and last time I made the bulk of the sock was made in this gray I did the toe and the heel and this cream and this time because you can see I have a little more cream left over than I do this one so this time I'm gonna make the the body of the sock and the cream and the toe and the heel and this one and so I'll just have kind of a, a, a you know an opposite <laughs> pair because I love those socks so much so that is in the very first bag and then let me see what's in this bag. Now, you know, sometimes I see people with these really cute project bags and they're really pretty and cute, but you know, sometimes I just use an old purse that doesn't suit me anymore that works just fine as a project bag for me. Sometimes I just use whatever I have. I don't go out and buy project bags because I just, I have a lot of bags somehow already <laughs> and I just use them. Okay, so this is an interesting little project here that I have been working on. It is an embroidery project. So here in my bag, I have a little case. It has uh, my yarn in it. It's just a, a glasses eye case that my glasses came in. And I just put all my thread in there. Or a big chunk of my thread in there. And I have said this before, I've been wanting to learn how to do more embroidery work. And so I have been following Marion on Marion's World here on YouTube. And she has a lovely uh, tutorial, like step by step tutorial. It's going to last the entire year of 2024. I haven't made it past January yet. <laughs> But she is an excellent teacher if you are wanting to learn more stitch work and how to do some of these stitches. And so uh, in January, she's she was teaching the running stitch. And so I just have this kind of abstract pattern here that I did. Now, my work looks different than her work because I have different fabric. I have different thread and different things. And, um, but it's, it's really neat to follow along. This is the one I'm working on right now. 
And so here she was showing how you can applique. So I appliqued these onto this fabric. So she's just making it a little more difficult as you go along. And I am just so excited to finish this. Now I've made mine into a block and mine is quite a bit bigger than what she had made because I want mine to go into a throw blanket. Um, for my living room and uh, when she's doing it she's making it into a stitch journal or a stitch book or I think that's what she calls it but I'm going to make mine a little bit different and so I don't know that I'll do a video on this but it is one of my unfinished objects that I'm working on right now so that is really fun now the rest of these these are things that I, I haven't seen in a while so what's in here oh okay okay this is some really pretty yarn I don't buy um, really fancy yarn very often because we don't have a fiber store in our town but I bought this when I was visiting my stepdaughter uh, near Houston and there's a lovely a little shop i don't oh yeah it's called the modern skein look at that see i have the bag <laughs> it's actually in conroe which is a suburb of houston and these colors are just so pretty okay so i started i started making a sweater i wanted to make a summer sweater and i wanted to try color work and for some reason i thought that was going to be a good idea i had never done color work before and people i've seen on youtube or blogs that talk about color work and how to do it they don't really talk about the fact that when you do color work because you're carrying the floats your your work is going to be a double thickness so it's going to be really thick which is great for winter sweaters and hats and gloves and stuff like that but for a summer sweater, that does, that's just not going to work. <laughs> and I don't know why I didn't think about that when I, um, when I started making this. So I've already taken it out and rewound it here. And so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this now. It's such a beautiful yarn. This is a Norwegian yarn. And it is... This is called Duo. Here's what it looks like. I'll bring it in close. Because I, even though my ancestors are Norwegian, I don't know how to pronounce that and I'm probably not going to say it right. So, <laughs> um, this is 55% merino wool and 45% cotton product produced in Norway by this company, is what it says. And it's so soft. And it's so, I just love these colors. They're so pretty. So my plan had been is that when I was doing my color work, I was going to fade into each color kind of like that. If I can get all those, I don't know if I can get all of these in the camera shot, but maybe if I do it like this, you can see them all. That was kind of my plan. And so then I thought about making a, a purse, like making a garter stitch purse with these. And uh, maybe I could do it that way. And I could do color work then because then it would just be extra thick and extra strong. Uh, but I really wanted something I could wear just because it's so soft and luxurious. I don't know. To me, it's luxurious because, like I said, we don't have, we don't have access to nice yarn unless I were to order it online. So I don't know. I want to do something special with this. And I'm thinking I still want to do a summer sweater, but I, what I'd really like to do is one of those like crocheted lace type sweaters where you wear like a tank top underneath them. And so I've been looking for a pattern and I think that's what I'm going to do with this. So um, it was an unfinished project and now it's kind of a, a, a new project really that I would like to start. I think a couple of these projects are that way. And I've just been holding off because I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that yarn. Have you ever done that? Have you ever spent like good money on yarn and then you're like, well, it has to be really, really good, whatever I make with it. <laughs> because I don't want to use really, really nice yarn and then 
it, I don't know, make something like a hand cloth or something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. But I want something kind of special made out of that. Okay, so let's look in the next one. Oh, okay. This one, this is a sock, as you can see. <laughs> And so I had bought different types of sock yarn to try them out. And I think this is an acrylic. And then I had bought a wool. I had made my husband a pair of wool socks first. And then I was making these for me. And it turned out really good. So I made one and I started the other one, but I have not finished it. And I think it's really cute. I'll bring it up close so you can see. This again was that, let me turn it this way so you can kind of see. This is that uh, Easiest Sock in the World by Arna and Carlos. Again, I was just practicing like the construction of these socks and how to make them. So I made a few of these. I do want to learn how to do like German short rows for the heel and learn how to do some other different heels. But since I was just starting out and learning, that's what I, that's what I did. I will definitely finish those before it gets cold again. Okay, well, what's in this one? I have a lot of stuff in this one. Oh, okay. This is my very first embroidery project. And this has a little story behind it. Okay, so I found this little box in a Goodwill store. And the box was in com it was totally complete. So it, it was a little kit that came with this little book here. I don't have the box anymore because it was kind of falling apart, but it had all the thread in it. It had needles in it. It had these little, um, if I can, oh, there's some. That's the ones I used here. I think there's, ooh, I don't know where they are. Oh, they're not in my bag. It came with a lot of these little uh, uh, iron-on patterns. So I'll have to find those because I don't know where those are. But it teaches you the little, the different stitches and everything. So it's kind of like a little beginner's kit. So it was really cute. And it was like two or three dollars. So, <laughs> and it also came with this fabric, which I thought was funny. It came with everything you need and a hoop. And so this was what I started working on. I'll bring it up closer so you can see. And so I can definitely finish this. I, I was planning to put this on a, uh, like a throw pillow and make a, make a throw pillow out of it. It's really small, so I would have to attach this to some other fabric and figure out how to do that. So I don't know. I may make a video about that, how that comes together. I think this will be pretty, pretty easy to do because when I first started this, I, I knew not, I knew like nothing. And so then I had, every time I came to a stitch, I would have to go back and look in the book to see how to do it. <laughs> and I'm a little bit better at it now, or at least I have a little bit more confidence in myself about doing it now. So I definitely want to finish that. That'll be fun. Okay. What's in here? Oh yeah. Okay. So this is another project where I finished one thing, but I didn't finish the other. So I had this hand dyed wool. I think it's 100% wool, merino wool, I believe it was. Let's see if it says on here, superwash merino wool. And I made a scarf out of this, like a cowl scarf. And here's what it looks like when it's wound up that closer I love the muted colors in it and I wanted to take this one and make a hat out of it and so I think I will definitely do that this winter so that's that so like I said these are kind of like finished but not finished projects because I need like I had plans to do more with it <laughs> okay so let me see this is my big bag here this is an actual craft bag that I purchased and it's really nice so it has two pockets right here and then one on the other side right here and then in the middle you can open it up and it has all your stuff in it well it has all my stuff in it 
Okay, so here I have just all my needles. These are my knitting needles. I have some needle stoppers in here. I have some scissors. I have some soap in here that I bought. I haven't used it yet. I bought also at that little homestead place. And it's a specific soap for uh, wool. So, I am planning to use that for my, my wool socks. And so, let's look at the projects. My crochet hooks are in a different place than in here because, you know, I don't know, but not all my stuff is gonna fit in one little bag. <laughs> Even though this is kind of a big bag. Okay, so what did I have in here? <gasps> oh yeah, okay. So, <laughs> this might be kind of an odd project. But, I'll show you here. Okay, so, <laughs> why do I have bird food in my bag? Well, uh, I had tried this bird. I like to feed the birds at our house. And I had tried this food, this bird food, and my birds didn't like it. And so, I thought that I would make a little, from a gift for my friends, I thought I would make a little bag, so I crocheted this little bag to put the food in, and then they could hang it. I haven't done the hanger part yet, but they can hang it and uh, see if, if their birds might like it. Well, let me backtrack. I have two friends that live, um, one lives in upstate New York, and the other friend lives in Vermont, and so it's a much colder climate there in the winter, and maybe their birds would like the suet, since my birds did not. But now, it's been a while, so this, this bird food, I don't know. Does bird food go bad after a while? It might get a little rancid, I'm not sure exactly. So I might have to purchase some new food. But I think it makes, I think this would make a really good gift if you know of someone else who likes wildlife and or likes to see backyard birds. I think that would be a cute gift. So that is why that's in there. And then this, okay, so I made one thing out of this yarn. I didn't like the yarn. Um, I was looking for wool yarn. It said it was wool. And then I got home and realized that I didn't read the label. And I don't have the label anymore, but it was, uh, this was Lion's brand. I got it at Michael's. I do remember that. And it's like 2% wool. So I think the only wool in it are these little these little flakes of hairy stuff in here. And it feels very soft like when you're touching it, but when you wear it, this is like a cowl that I made, and when I put it on, it was very itchy. And so I just, I didn't like it at all. So I took, I took the, um, I also made, what did I make? Like some arm warmers, I guess you would call. I made that and that's what I already took apart and I made this. I'm gonna take that apart too. And I'm making some pillow covers, like some uh, like throw pillows. And all I'm doing is knitting it out of a rib stitch. This is a very bulky yarn, so I think it looks nice. I tried to do cable stitches, that's what I wanted to do. And I don't know if it's because it was so bulky, but it didn't look right. It didn't turn out right and so I'm just doing a rib stitch. And it's just one long piece that was my plan, and then I was just going to fold it up like that and stitch it down the sides and across the top, and I might make it in a way where, you know, you can easily take it out and put it back if you need to wash it, if it gets really dirty. But, so that is that project. So I like the color and the texture of this yarn, but I do not like how it feels against my skin. Now, let's look in the other side here. Oh, these are my very first socks I ever made. <laughs> these are also wool socks. I have them in a bag because sometimes, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just my the way my mom had taught me, but anytime you had something wool that you should put it up because moths can get into it. Now, I don't know. I don't really need, I'll necessarily have moths in my house, so 
I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> maybe it's just old habits. I have it in the plastic bag there. But these socks, these are the very first socks I ever made. Also using that easiest sock in the world pattern. And I dropped a stitch in one of them. I'm not sure which one it is. Maybe I can find it in a minute. But they were way too big. So I don't know how... I don't know. I've never used them. Right there. There's the drop stitch. If you can see, like right there. There's a little drop stitch right there. So I need to fix that, and that's why these are in here. I might be able to use these as, like, if it's a really cold day, and I need to wear two pairs of socks. Uh, that does happen sometimes. It doesn't happen often in Texas, but it, does, it, it, it has happened. A few years ago, we had an extremely cold spell. It was like a record-breaking cold snap that lasted a week, and we were below freezing for a week, which never happens here. Like... It hadn't happened in 200 years. And so, you know, sometimes those things happen. And I'll have some warm socks if it does. <laughs> What's this? Oh, okay. So this is my... This is a summer sweater that I was making. Oh, I'm getting excited. I want to finish these projects now. So maybe that's a good thing. Like, if you, if you have unfinished projects and you kind of think, well, I need to finish those, but you're really not excited to do it. Maybe just take a look at all of them because like I remember starting this and making this. This is a sweater that I started making and I don't know why I didn't, I don't know why I put it aside. Probably just because I wanted to make something different. But there's the top. So these are the shoulders. Here's the neckline here. So it's a top down knit. And it's really cute. Like, it's go, it's on its way, you know? I'm using a pattern. If I can find the pattern, I'll show you a picture of the pattern in this video. Uh, it was a free pattern, but I can't remember the name of it or who made it at the moment. But, and this, this stuff is really soft. Let's see if I have, what is this? This is Yarn Bee. I really like Yarn Bee. And it's called Smoky Plum, and it is... What's it made from? It's so soft. Let's see if I can find it. I thought I saw it somewhere. Oh, right here. 80% cotton, 20% linen. So I thought that would make a nice, a nice sweater for summer. So I'm excited. I'm going to finish that. The thing is though, is that like I'm on a health journey right now and I'm in the process of losing weight and I, I'm, I'm hesitant to make anything for myself right now because if I make it now and then I don't finish it until like next summer or this winter and then I wouldn't wear it until the next summer and then it would be too big. I'd be sad. So <laughs> I don't know. That's the only problem with that right now. Okay, so I think that was my last one. Now I'm going to show you my my Kawandi. Okay. So here I have my fabric and my scissors that I've been using. I have my thread in here, that, of course, that I've been using. Now I had a few comments on my very first Kawandi video about um, that I should use a shorter thread. Because I think in my second video I talked about that I really didn't like this thread for this project. It wasn't working out very well. It was tangling a lot and then it was it was coming apart. Like I would be stitching and then I would kind of pull it through and it would just it would just come apart. And it's because it was getting so tangled up that it was untwisting itself. And so um, several people commented that I might use a shorter length of thread when I'm doing this. And I have been doing that and it's helped a lot. That hasn't happened to me anymore with this thread. And so let me pull it out here. 
It's really pretty and I'm almost done with it. It's getting really close. Which just makes me really excited. Maybe that's another reason why I'm really looking forward to uh, working on some of my other projects because this one is almost done. Okay. So let me show you what I did here. It looks a little weird, I know. There we go. Okay, so <laughs> I've been rolling it up like this and pinning it so that when I'm stitching, I can hold it like this and I can stitch and my needle's not hitting my table. So recently I have been uh, stitching this on a table, mostly in my dining room because it helps me to keep my lines straighter and it also uh, has helped me I don't know, just to hold on to it. Because as it's gotten, I've gotten to the middle, it's just gotten a little bit harder to work with. And so that was kind of my solution to that. So if you are someone who does a lot of quilting or, you know, stitching like this and you stitch on a table, let me know what do you do to protect your table? Like what do you, what do you put under your, your work so that your needle is not scraping the table when you're working? because I need some suggestions. <laughs> I have a mat, like a cutting mat, but also I didn't want to scratch that up either. So I was trying to think of something else I could use that it wouldn't matter, but I, I can't think of anything that I have on hand that I could use at the moment. So I've just been doing that. I've just been rolling it up, holding it like this when I'm trying to stitch. And as you can see, let me show you the inside here. Like it's almost, it's almost done. Like this blue is my inside fabric. So I just, like they're almost coming together. It's so exciting to see that. That's another reason I was working it on the table. Because if you have this in your lap, these, you know, let me pull it up. These pieces will flop down like that. And then it's kind of hard to tell that you're so close to the end, you know, because all this is kind of not where it should be. So when I lay it on the table, I can lay it like this so that I know I know, you know, how much fabric I have and things like that. And so that's it, you guys. Thank you for joining me here and kind of walking down memory lane over the past two years of all the, the things that I started making and didn't complete. I really want to finish those now. And I'm so excited to get this one finished. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.